session is being recorded. Excellent. Okay, let us go. <laughs> Oh, well, good morning, everyone. Thank morning. you for joining us. <laughs> Hello. It's, uh, it's a rather grey day here, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, but we're, we're here in our studio, coming to you live from East Kent. We are. We suspect that most people are regulars, but for anyone that isn't or might be viewing the recording, my name's Chris Boris, and I'm the Copyright Licensing and Policy Manager at the University of Kent. And I'm Jane Secker, and I'm a senior lecturer at City University. And we run um, the copyright and online learning at a time of uncertainty webinar series. And we're also co-chairs of the Alt Special Interest Group for Copyright and Online Learning, which many of you are members of. So, so what are we going to do today? Thanks Chris? for joining us today. So we'll be doing some copyright news as ever. Got some good opportunities, particularly for professional development uh, this time around. Uh, but the main topic today um, is Irene uh, from uh, Joe Hall Library at Universities at Medway will be talking us through the survey that she ran on these webinars, feedback from these webinars and what you and others are looking for in the future. So it's a really good opportunity to take stock of what's been happening over the past year and a half or more than that now uh, and to think about how and to give us some more feedback as well, we want to have a bit of a discussion, don't we, yeah, about what, what you'd like to see um, for the webinars, particularly um, from 2022. We've got quite a few lined up already now for going through to the end of this year, mm -hmm. but we're, we're open to all sorts of suggestions of what kinds of topics you want to cover next year. So, yeah, that's definitely the plan for today. Um, right, shall we talk about what's happened since we last met? Yes. So a couple of, shall I go first? You should go first. So that's a very bizarre that's picture. It's a, it's a slightly bizarre picture. Um, so I'm talking to you about the sound. I want to obviously make sure that the sound is right. What this is, is in my bathroom, this was at home, I'd stacked up all this acoustic panels that I'd used, created a few years ago when I made a uh, recording studio with a friend of mine in a tiny shed. <laughs> now, I brought them all back. Now, there's way more than I thought there were. Um, I will be over the time chopping these up and putting them in the room that I'm normally sat at when I'm, I'm back in my house, turning it into um, a muso sound cave. Um, but it, what it does is it, it stops the reflection. So if there are any comments on the sound quality, there, I, there haven't, might be, I haven't got those panels. There might be some left over. I, I knew you remember. were. I knew that's what they, what you were hinting at. I knew they were. Yes. Yeah. We will be in terms of the setup here. So we we've got this setup where we think this works as well as a, a sort of desk format, mm -hmm. and we are planning on doing some. Um, what you're going to do some work like in your basement. So yes. we might be able to do some more acoustic. Hopefully. And yeah. lighting work. So all, all, that, all that in the pipeline. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my nerdy session at the moment. It is. It is. Yes. And what I've been up to, so I've been really busy, um, and um, I, I've been uh, getting my module ready. I'm going to say a bit more about that in news, because there is an open webinar series that runs along with that. But that's starting next week, Digital Literacy is an Open Practice. So just getting ready to teach um, my module, which runs at City, for, mainly for staff who are taking the Masters in Academic Practice, but some LIS students as well. And I think some members of the library staff are coming on the module this time. So yeah, it's very exciting. And has my cat Pickle helping. She's very good. She's, yeah, she's going to feature a lot in there. Yeah. Yeah, we've had to lock her out of the room, haven't we? She's, yeah. She might, is she, is she actually locked in somewhere? No, she she's locked? not, she could appear. <laughs> okay. Right, um, so this is a reminder that we have an archive of all the previous webinar recordings. Now we are doing a bit of work on how we can make these even more accessible and we will be having a conversation with Greg later about the YouTube channel mm -hmm. that, or the YouTube playlist that, that Alt has set up. And so we're looking at whether we can pull out some of the previous ones which are of particular relevance and do work with it. Um, um, but yes, if you want to see the full list, it's there, but we realise that no, it could be more accessible. Uh, more yeah. accessible than yeah, definitely. How we do that. Definitely. Um, okay. 
So it looks like we are on to talking about as he pads his way to find the jingle. Oh. Okay, what's been going on in the world of copyright news, Chris? Um, well, let's file up the first one. Okay, I think we had a question about this as well yes. um, from Alison that I just saw pop up on the screen. So, do you want to tell us about these causes? I these don't think are we've the... got anyone from earlier on. No, I was just having a look at this yeah. to see whether you know, people that have joined us in the past. I know that learning on screen, if there are any questions about how to pay for the courses, they should be able to provide you that information. These are the courses that uh, Bart Maletti um, has been running for some time. I know Sergio from Learning on Screen posted on these, uh, linked to these on um, this copy seek earlier this week. And these are excellent uh, sessions if you particularly are looking at how copyright relates to um, creative reuse in audiovisual works. Very strong link with the presentation that we had from Bart that we did with him last time round. Mm. So, um, you know, he's got sort of nuts and bolts of copyright and how it works, and then lots of use cases and really good examples um, of how this is really, um, uh, how it works in education and, and, and research. So, uh, recommended. Yeah, course. absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so, that's that's something there for people to, to join the next one, the Site Wind Forum. Yes, um, so um, I think this has been posted on this copy seek. I'm sure many of you have heard, um, and it's a free event. Um, some of you have, will have definitely been along to this before, but it's going to be online. It's on the 25th of November, so we've just got a link there to the Eventbrite page. Um, and uh, you know, do get yourself signed up if you haven't. There's um, a couple of uh, I think there's a morning and an afternoon session, and there's going to be some really interesting speakers. Yeah. So, yeah. The next thing to point you towards is this uh, Future of Open webinar that uh, Creative Commons uh, are running. So they have a number of different platforms, and these are findings on policy issues. So they're looking at the whole open ecosystem, different openness, cultural heritage, and um, I think they've had four and, working groups, right, haven't they, okay. that have been working in different areas, one of which um, Joseph Rose has been leading, which yeah. I think um, looks like the one that might be most relevant because it does talk about copyright as well, that one. Um, but um, yeah, it, 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 this webinar is a chance to find out, I think, about all the work that they've been doing and the sort of findings from those four um, working groups. So it's a, a, probably a good way of um, getting up to speed with that without having to plow through lots and lots of documents. Yes, and as with the Creative Commons Summit, there is registration where you can choose how much you pay for that. So it's a kind of donation model. But as with everything around Creative Commons, there is freely accessible options mm. for, for everyone. Mm. Um, so the final, the final part of our copyright news is um, yeah. So I just this. wanted to flag up. Um, so I mentioned that I've been busy getting my uh, module ready. Um, I do have a blog for my module, um, Digital Literacy and Open Practice, so there's quite a lot of information if you're not taking the course and you're interested. But the main thing is there is a webinar series, and um, coming up on the 29th of October, if you can't get enough of Chris Morrison, <laughs> he'll be talking um, at, I think it's at 11 o'clock, that webinar, um, but the details are all on the, the website there if you want to book a place. Um, I think, Chris, you're going to be talking about um, copyright and how it relates to both digital literacy and open practice, aren't you? That's but, the brief I've been given but people by the incredibly who, demanding module coordinator. <laughs> but people who've heard you before, um, you can say some new stuff, maybe. Yeah, well. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's on the 29th, but um, it's also worth checking out some of the other um, uh, speakers. I've got a really great lineup of people speaking. Um, I've got um, Lorna Campbell and Catherine Cronin, who are both sort of giants in the field of open education. They'll be talking um, at my webinar on the 4th of November. Um, and then I've got some colleagues, um, uh, Julie Bose, who's actually co-teaching the module with me at City, um, and our, our 
colleague Lauren Reagan, they're going to be talking about um, some findings from uh, the digital capabilities survey that we ran at City um, this just this year. Um, so it's some findings about um, students and their digital capabilities. The full list is there. I won't go through them all, but if you do want to come along, then you're very welcome. They are open to external. But it would be a bit strange if they weren't. Yes. Excellent. So you're up to date. Yeah. So let's get on with today's session uh, where we are evaluating the webinar series. So we'd like to uh, get Irene. Irene, can you see if your microphone is working? Can we hear you? Can we see you? I hope so. Hey, there yes. she is. Yes, yes. Hi, Irene. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm just wondering why did I agree to do this? <laughs> yeah, no, you're a legend and this is going to be brilliant. So um, I'm going to get your slides up. Um, and, uh, and are you there in your new um, office? I am in my new office. I do have an oh, office, everyone. <laughs> we could have all been in the same place. We could have all been in Chatham. <laughs> Can I can I can I just say it? you are more than welcome to come and broadcast from here one of the future webinars because there's plenty of room. Oh, okay, okay. That well, sounds good. There could be a waterfront behind us. We there. could go for a maritime theme. Couldn't we, we could. Yeah. 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 Let, let's do is that. It, is it the longest library in Europe? That, they they that? claim that, but I have not been able to uh, prove either way. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's your task. While you work there, you'll have to go around wizarding libraries all around Europe. Yeah, I don't, yeah, but that's that's I, I volunteer to do that. <laughs> so, okay. so, Irene, over to you. Hopefully, you can advance the slides because you should have the present presentation right. But you're going to talk us through the survey and the analysis of, of that that you've done. Yes, I, I, I want to, um, I have to say, I don't see anywhere where I can advance the slides. Ah, okay. You should be, there should be a little, where it says web, web, webinar survey analysis. If not, you can do the classic next slide, please. And we'll okay, because I, I, I really cannot see any buttons that allow me to do that. Okay, we will advance them for you, don't worry. Okay. So is that okay? I have to say, um, you know, like it's not like we are talking in cryptic here. It's a, um, I, I've been, um, uh, I'm not at the moment the collaborations, compliance, and copyright manager at the University of Greenwich. I have accepted um, an interim post as the drill hole manager. So this is probably my last gig as copyright manager for a few months at least. But I'm, I'm very pleased that this is how I am closing this stage for the time being anyway. Well, what's the copyright checklist, Irene? You, you can never always. Say, oh, you can't. Exactly. So. Always. Okay, well, but, I'm going to go with you. Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah. so next slide, please. There we go. Right. So you know, as as most of of colleagues in 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 the webinar today, they know we've been um, we we run um, I ran um, a survey in in able in 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 order to uh, be able to um, evaluate the impact that these webinars that Jane and Chris run from the very very beginning of of the pandemic at a time definitely of um, 13 and 13 it um and, and what the webinars have meant for the community and and how we can kind of uh you know draw lessons lessons to be learned and, and how to move then also uh forward so uh, i've been analyzing the the results and i i have to say that analyzing the survey results have gave me a a real opportunity for reflection for reflection on those first few days and um, first few weeks uh, of, of lockdowns and, and, and the pandemic and all those worrying news that uh, we were watching from home and and it has helped me also to realize and I'm sure colleagues will agree with this and and the survey tells 
tells us this, uh, how lonely the life of a copyright manager, uh, the life of a copyright officer uh, is or was, and how at the very beginning we could almost feel that you know the, the you know people were running around trying to figure other things and suddenly um, when there was no access to physical resources um, and what that meant for the our institutions um, suddenly how, there was a need for an alternative how would, do we make these these resources available how do we how do we support the learning of students remotely without not really knowing how how long this was going to be for and suddenly we found ourselves at the center of it and and you know there was that need to to come together um and 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 share good practice and share advice and and i think i have to say uh chris and jane the survey um, reflects on this, the survey collect this idea that, you know, you make such a big, huge difference from the very beginning. And I think it's a good example how sometimes people, individuals, can have a real impact in, in a collective experience. So, you know, my, my personal thank you to you both, but this is what the the survey respondents are also telling telling me, and I guess telling telling us. So, um, you know, we did have 62 respondents to the to the survey, um, all of them from the UK, and um, except for one person who may have not. Uh, attend the webinars, but probably in, um, benefited from the recordings or, or the slides uh, after, you know, um, we all um, at attended um, an, a number of them. So if we can move to the next um, slide, please. Uh, again, this is not a surprise to anyone. The majority of attendees are people in, in the libraries or, um, you know, with with a copyright responsibility, you know, being the manager, being the office or being the librarian who knows a little bit more and, and, and answer those questions, but 100% belong to the Haiti sector. Next slide, please. <laughs> and, um, you know, as I said, uh, most, uh, almost all of the respondents tune in live, but with different frequency, but definitely the watching of the recordings, the looking at the slides, contributing uh, to the sessions as a speaker or as a participant asking questions uh, is something that you know all of all of us uh, did. Next question, please. Uh, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, the next two slides are about impact. And I can leave those there to uh, for colleagues to, to to read. And obviously, the slides are going to be available to everyone after. But for me, the highlights are 82.3 percent of participants agree or highly agree that the webinars have helped them to develop their professional confidence further. 83.9%, almost 84% of participants agree or highly agree that the webinars help them to develop a sense of belonging within the wider copyright community. And almost 56.5% um, of the participants agree or highly agree that the webinars have helped enhance the student and staff experience at their organizations during the pandemic. And I, I guess if the proof is in the pudding, as they say, I think this is very uh, telling how getting together and having uh, been exposed to information and um, expert experience and expert advice allow big part of all of us 
to develop a service or to put guidance in place that had a direct impact in the um, activities of our institutions. So if we can move to the next slide, and I give a brief time for colleagues to also look at those. I just want to talk very briefly that from this, from the analysis of the impact, for me, I can see two big themes, which is how these webinars became the professional support that some of us needed at that time of uncertainty, but also they were there for personal support. And if we move to the next slide, where I have gathered some of the comments from the respondents about you know, this impact, professional, professionally, but also personally, some of the survey respondents are telling us, are comment on how the lockdown um, impacting impacted on them personally, and as I have already mentioned, they felt very isolated from the rest of their colleagues. But suddenly, these webinars presented an opportunity for colleagues to be able to talk to other colleagues, even if those colleagues were in other institutions, and um, explore options, alternatives um, of um, plans to be put in place to support students and staff. But definitely there was a huge impact on um, you know, your, personal, your personal life. Regarding the professional support, the webinars were an opportunity to build and develop professional confidence. And you know, having the community gather, um, presented with opportunities to discuss, and also to develop knowledge and share good practice. If we can move to the next slide, please. Um, I, I guess this uh, the frequency of how we would like these webinars to be run moving forward. Uh, I think that the the, the if the question was, do we want this to carry on? The answer is yes. But now that we are less, we are out of of the, you know, that the kind of crisis, and we are probably all back uh, on campus and back on the office. Maybe there is a less need for this to happen every week, and maybe fortnightly or monthly is is the uh, is the way to move this forward. Next slide, please. Um, I, I, I found the, um, the answers for when we ask for suggestions for topics for future webinars very interesting because actually all the things that they are on this slide are things that we discuss uh, constantly and you know there are things that are mentioned almost on every webinar that you have run and um, so I guess there is a need to have uh, dedicated webinars to different themes, but actually with copyright, with the way things are going, um, you know, these are things that we can discuss <laughs> almost non non stop. Uh, but I guess you know, these these are the areas of interest for for professionals um, with copyright responsibilities. And um, you know, how, how long is is you know a, a threat of uh, <laughs> of court? So um, I believe this is the last slide. And now I would like to. Um, you know, give you back uh, <laughs> the mic and, and see what, what, how you want to explore all this. Thank you, Irene. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, that's really good to be able to share back with the people. Uh, primarily, we're, we're working on the basis that it was the people present largely who filled in that survey. So really mm -hmm. good to be able to see those results in total and have a conversation 
we're going to write up uh, it up as a report I, as well, I, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's uh, something we plan to do. So. Yeah, I had a little cry when I read some of it as well. <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> the first time. Yeah, I mean, what we what we wanted to do was was have a discussion about um, what we found, what people were saying, uh, some reflections from us over the last uh, few months, and then thinking about what, what happens next. Um, and what we're already doing. So I think some, in some ways we're, we're already, we've already been responding to this. We've already uh, moved, for example, onto a monthly, uh, generally speaking, yeah. monthly frequency, which seems to make more sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but generally speaking, uh, we were very pleased to get such positive feedback. Mm. I mean, to hear how many people were saying that it kept them going to have something where we were, mm you know, uh, able to share and bring some, um, you know, some more lighthearted, less doom laden uh, discussions into what was going on. But I mean, actually, it helped us going. Because, yeah, it did. We, you know, we were also <laughs> struggling just like everybody else yeah. was really at that time. Um, and to be able to bring people together and to feel like, feel like we were doing something. And the thing is that this community has been around for a long time. Mm. Um, and in fact, it, it, it it certainly pre-exists my um, coming into the education and higher education space. Um, so it was great to be able to pick up on the fact there was already a well-established discussion list. The questions were coming through um, and it just gave us an opportunity to, to do something that helped us feel like, because yeah, otherwise it was that feeling, wasn't it, at that time of powerlessness, what yeah. you actually do. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, and being able to connect and talk to other people, mm -hmm. um, and to hear that that you know lots of the questions that were coming up um, were very similar all around in all the different universities. Yeah, kind of. I've certainly found that something that when I kind of think, oh, another crazy thing happening, and then I discover actually no, it's it's happening across higher education. We're all going through yeah. this kind of crazy time at the moment. So we we yeah we. We had a couple of things, you know, that that sort of struck us. I mean, just it was just really, it was really nice to read the, the things that you all said. Um, and um, but I'm never happy, am I? No. I'm always looking for ways. How could we do it better? Picky, picky. Yeah. You're always picky. I am picky. Um, yes. Yes. But um, uh, so we know that. The, so some of the practical things, the, the frequency, you know, it was exhausting doing mm. it on a weekly uh, basis. Mm. Uh, in fact. We, although we got into a formula, I mean that was that was, we were in that kind of. Well, what's happening next? Yeah. And there was, you know, is, is the British Library open or closed? And what's the, and we were in that sort of mode, so we felt that it was necessary to share as frequently as that. Um, so I think this seems to make sense. Mm. Um, mm, mm. I mean, it's it's it it takes some time for us to do it. It does. And we do do it because it's related to our roles and our area of interest. I think in terms of sustainability, part of the reason, one of the main reasons we wanted to set up the special interest group was to actually bring a few people into the organisational and keeping things going and, and see if we could put out the, uh, you know, get other people to contribute, which has been great. And then we've got to have such brilliant response to that. So again, thank you, Irene, for having done this job and thanks to everyone else that's been supporting this. It's been quite difficult for us to let go in some respects, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Because we kind of set it up and we sort of spun it up as a cottage industry, and then yeah, yeah. So I think we need to. But I think we are. If anyone has got, you know, any ideas and mm. suggestions, and if people want to, you know, drop us a line after today, or come on the mic and talk to us, you know, while we're live, then we we're really we're really keen to hear your ideas. Um, and I think. One of the things that I've I've done when I've set up other groups as well is I've often thought, okay, well I'm reaching this little audience. We've kind of got a nice little niche here, but should we be bringing in more staff? Should teaching staff, should non-copyright specialists um, be attending the webinars? And should was, more learning technologists come? That was one of the comments that came through as well. We were looking through the survey responses. Someone saying, how can we get this? Well, how can we reach those audiences? And they generally don't want to. You know, it would be so useful for these other groups to hear the messages, but they just don't seem to want to engage. And I no. think it's it's the amount of time that they've got and the amount of you know, how much do they want to do a deep dive into each of the different provisions uh, in their. I think some some of the clearly some of the topics have got much wider 
um, interest in them. So we have had large numbers of ten um, webinars we've done on, and, and that's what we need to, I think, perhaps focus on um, working out what are the topics, you know, that are going to have really broad appeal, but also not forget about our community, and we want to be able to talk about things that just the specialists want to talk about as well. Yeah, so, so I think there are, I mean, what we've had, for example, the recent controlled digital lending session that we did mm. had a much broader appeal than the standard copyright, even though it was very copyright related, and mm. we had Emily give quite a detailed legal talk on that, but nonetheless it has a huge impact on acquisitions, librarians, and library leaders, and all, you know, there's, there's larger uh, political, um, uh, kind of practical considerations of how that might work. Um, so, I mean, we've got, we've got, we could probably waffle on for a little bit longer, but just to say we would very much, uh, if anybody does have any thoughts about what we're saying or anything that they've seen today, we, we want to encourage a discussion. So please feel free to put your hand up or put a comment into the chat or a question or a thought, and mm. we'll pick up on that. Um, some other thoughts we had. How does this relate to in-person events? Mm. So we're happy to carry on um, doing these sessions for as long as people find them useful and as long as we feel that it's it's a worthwhile undertaking. It would be nice to see people but it, again. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> Wouldn't it? It would be nice to have an actual event at yeah. some point, maybe in 2022. We certainly hope that we can do our Ice Pop conference um, in person mm -hmm. next next June, July time. So yeah, June. I think June. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I think what what we might find, what our feeling is, is there are a range of different copyright and education related events, and we we are thinking people being able to travel might be harder in the future than it was in the past. I think and certainly in our university travel budgets have been put down to zero. So if you want to travel this academic year, you have to make a very strong case mm. for why you have to travel. Um, so it might might lead to some consolidation. So I think it's a little bit like, I'm going to use a metaphor that might be not very good. <laughs> if you're going to eat meat, which you know you're not going to, you might make it a special occasion rather than something you do unthinkingly. Something like that, that we, if we do travel, if we do get together, then it's, yeah. it's really to make sense. Um, not to eat no no we could be all vegetarian i'm very happy thank to you. Thank you. No, absolutely fine. okay we've got a couple of comments coming yeah. in um nice to be called a national treasure don't <laughs> 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 let it go into your heads <laughs> no, exactly. no. Um, i like philippa's suggestion um that it'd be nice to hear from a learning technologist um we could I know a few. Could ask a few, see if yeah. they'll, they'll come and talk. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It's a very good. I mean, because we go to the um, assembly meetings of the OC Association of Learning Technology as the co-chairs of the special interest group. So we talk and tell them about all the stuff that's going on in the webinars and all the things happening in this community. But I think there's it's time to say, come and talk to us. Yeah, maybe we we'll get a couple. To come along as well. One, you know, not just. I think it'd be good to have like a panel. We could have a panel. A panel. Of Certainly, we've been speaking to the to my colleagues at the university of yeah. Kent who have been doing a lot of webinar work. Yeah. That we're doing webinars, so cross webinar. A bit like the podcast, isn't it? Yeah. You do. I do your podcast. You do mine. <laughs> um, so yes, let's. That's. A, yeah. A good, good idea. idea. Thank you, Philippa. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Um, I think some other thoughts we had. Um, and Irene, this was something you pulled out because you presented this to the, the special interest group committee a few weeks back. Some people saying, could we have more basic content? Can there be some more primers on how does this stuff work? Um, and I think we've, we've been very keen to support people and people who recently mm. pick up responsibility for copyright. Mm. Um, and in fact, Billing for next month, that is the topic of next month's webinar, which is becoming a copyright, becoming a copyright specialist, specialist and yep. we're getting experiences and we've got um, three excellent speakers. We've got Hannah Pyman from Essex, we've got Simon Cox from, where's Simon from? UWE. Of course he is. And we've got Kate Vasily from Middlesex, uh, who uh, giving us different perspectives um, on that, two of them 
more recently become copyrights. Kate's definitely uh, an expert. Uh, she's definitely indeed. Um, <laughs> and uh, we've definitely uh, we've been thinking about creating uh, a course in copyright that is more than just a one day session or mm. a two day session, uh, but less than doing a full on diploma, postgraduate diploma like I did or the leads on to a master's. Um, but that what we're seeing now is we've put together a special interest group, we're getting interesting conversations mm. um, and how that might work. But it's a lot of work. It and it, it's work. a lot and it's a lot more work to put that kind of content together mm. than is uh, knocking together a, a, a monthly webinar. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. We, but we we've got an, an eye on what happened what happened in the US. We yeah. had a very interesting conversation with Kyle Courtney last week. That was uh, copyright first and responders. That, yeah, his copyright first responders and how that works, which is a fantastic model. If you're a copyright legend that works at Harvard, yes. <laughs> you could basically <laughs> devote all your time and just travel all around the world teaching librarians about copyright because that's what you're into. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So I but I think there's. There's something we can put together there, but we, you know, there, there's the uh, what they've been doing at the University of Miami and, and Carl Myers there, and and you know, we saw that. I think we, we put a link to that session, didn't we? Where it's how it is the copyright 101 yeah. for librarians with Ken Cruz and Emily Alpenio and, and those guys. We could do something like that on a on a sort of voluntary put it together kind of basis, but I think it would it, it needs something. Mm. Um, really sustainable and someone's at least one or two or a core team's time to really put that together. Definitely. I think we're concerned about how much professional development you can do in that more formal way mm. um, as a volunteer and whether there's a responsibility for professional bodies to sort of help out here. So yeah. Yeah. Because this is professional development and we're getting that from coming back in the so we, Yeah. And we have it been is. talking to Silly Holmes at Alt about it we for have, quite yeah. a while. So um, but there's a difference between a community of practice in a more informal way that, than actually doing a following a curriculum and yes. a set agenda and having that being properly um, resourced so that people are supported as they go through that and mm. are recognised. Doesn't need to be a full on diploma qualification, but we you know you have some sort of certificate. something that is more yeah. meaningful than I signed up for this course and I was there for a day. Yeah, that would actually say no, no I. I that, that's ideally what we would like. Definitely. To do, but it's yeah. uh, how does that fit in with the other stuff? We had some other just some things that we thought about. We're going to sort of try and make sure that we nominate a couple of people to take notes when we ever do closed sessions, so that we can get those out to people. We're aware there's a couple of sessions um, that people miss. That um, although we do have recordings of them um, because they were closed sessions, we're we're sort of just working out what's the best way of making those available, whether we can make them available in a more limited way by sharing them on this copy seek, or if we just have somebody um, nominated, you know, we're sure, for example, at the last webinar we did, a couple of people um, will have made notes for themselves, mm. and we're just thinking, well, would, would people be happy then to sort of almost, you know, crowdsource notes or share their notes so that, because I think the, the stumbling block we have is at the end of the webinar, it creates quite a lot of administration for us to sort of get on with them. Yeah, there's a few steps. I mean, we're, we're happy to do them, but getting the recording and mm. getting the link up and updating the website and then making sure that anything mm. that we've said that we do in the heat of the moment, oh, yeah, we'll do that. Mm. Um, I think it would be useful if others were able to. And we, it's, it's up to us really to ask, I think, to mm. actually put the call Definitely. out. But Definitely. I think in the future, and a crowd, it seems to make sense to me crowdsource set of Chatham House notes mm. that are pretty much ready after the event yeah. can almost immediately be circulated amongst uh, on, on Kippy, Coffee Seek and anyone else that we feel it would be appropriate to share mm. them. But well. anyone's thoughts on that would be very welcome as well. Um, and anyone's thoughts on our singing? Or your One singing? person said less singing. I think that is not going to happen. It's an outlier. It's, it's an outlier. outlier. It's an outlier. Yeah. yeah. It's nonsense. Yeah, it's probably somebody who's tone deaf. You can't appreciate my incredible. Maybe music. some more dedicated karaoke sessions. We're going to do a sea shanty yeah. anyway. We know. are. Yes, Ian's going to write one for us. So, okay. So, so should we open the floor? See if anyone wants to ask yeah. anything? We... Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got that slide, haven't I? The one that says, Topics for future webinars, oh, yes. uh, which is actually similar to what, uh, not to overlap 
overlap with higher inside, but I can certainly pull it back up again. Mm. Uh, but yeah, anybody want to raise their hand to take the floor? Irene, is there anything you'd like to say in response to what we've said? I just want to uh, pick up on what you were saying about the need for some kind of um, official or, or a course or something that people can can go and 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 you know develop their knowledge and and this is why I was very you know consciously chose the words build and develop professional confidence because you will you will assume that when people are given responsibility for copyright and their institutions, you know, you come with some kind of, of knowledge uh, or, or understanding and then you can develop your expertise. But I think, I think there is definitely a need um, and obviously, and, and only talking from my personal experience to put some pressure in the powers to be in the official bodies to recognize that copyright is a very important issue um you know when you are you you are running or, or you are you know you're running a service you're developing a library you are uh, you know embedded in an academic context or not and um you know maybe um a, a course or module for you know masters in information you know copyright should have a bigger presence and do we do we have a say can we make suggestions um but also i am all, always thinking of the obvious um place to go which is silib and um you know and and th these are important important um issues because the more prepared people are the better um you know, the better prepared you are when you have to talk about, for instance, ebooks and licensing, or um, or intellectual property in an educational context, and you know, and you have academics asking you who, you know, do I own my rights to my presentation, or do I own the rights to an article, and all these things that very often are case specific. But you know, it's part of being a librarian. Never mind a copyright manager. Mm -hmm. It's a really good point, and it's just making me think now that clearly one of the roles of the special interest group is to make that case mm -hmm. and to make that case to those other bodies, rather than than us saying, "Hey, we can create all this stuff and we'll do it," because that there is there is a limit to which you can do. On a, a voluntary basis, mm. um, you know, without actually having. And I, I think, I, I think, um, if you, you know, I have spoken and, and to Silic a few times about this, and um, you know, they do run lots of courses mm. about copyright. We know they do, and um, it is one of the most popular areas. But it's just whether in making the case for taking that a step further. And whether that should come from one of the library schools to offer it as a module that other people can take, or mm. you know, it's it's. I think it's it, it's, it's a conversation we've been having for many years. It is, and I think. And we've never really kind of but, managed but, to but, convince anyone that this needs to be done. But what we found now is it, it, things change, mm. um, and that, and clearly there is. Um, post lockdown and who knows whether there will be further lockdowns the world has changed i think there's a slightly different environment so um irene it's just that um you know I, I mean and i feel i feel very strongly about this but i'm sure other colleagues in the room do and you know i will I hope to see uh, other other opinions here but you think if librarians had in general a much more robust knowledge on copyright issues we will be able to build better cases um when um, paying for licensing for electronic resources, or I think the publishers will feel less comfortable or confident um, trying to develop the monopoly that they have, because you know sometimes the the, the, the thing is, and, and we know copyright is very confusing and very blurry, and they will go around mm. throwing very long words to people who don't know what they and I'm not talking about librarians obviously I'm talking other people signing those contracts and um and, and there is no way out of them. But you know we know that there are 
arguments to be made against those. So that's just, I guess, that's just an area that I, I feel anyway very, very strong yeah, about. I, I entirely agree with you, Irene. I think what, what we've got, though, is there is a difference between understanding copyright law and having negotiation skills sure. and knowing, understanding what it means to negotiate and agree a contract and think through all of the and, and to do something which is kind of effectively procurement. Um, and I think it's linking that together. So we, we speak to a lot of representatives from publishers and, and they don't necessarily know that much about copyright, mm. but they know about how their businesses work. And so it, it's part of this general commercial awareness that is that is part is is at heart of the information profession and always has been. Because you're dealing with budgets and you're dealing with um, running services and and you need to have that knowledge. Um, but it is understanding copyright is particularly important to the information professional because they are constantly balancing that this is done under license, this is done with agreement and with permission. Mm. And then here are things that libraries, educational and cultural institutions can do without the permission, so it's the exception side of things. So I think the two absolutely go hand in hand. So we're not, I don't think we're proposing that copyright gets, is the answer, the silver bullet to everything everyone understands copyright and it, but it's that it, it's always embedded in the right place. Well, I've just done a quick poll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and um, Quite a few of you didn't answer it yet, but that might be because you don't know, or I, I just made it simple as a yes no. Yeah. But, um, I, 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 you, you finished it now, haven't you? I have finished it. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to click. So I was one of the people that didn't click. Oh, can, you, can you open it up again? Okay, okay. Right. Are we going to run it again? Yeah, I've got to run it again now. Uh, Sorry, everyone. It's been run again. I can't seem to answer it. Maybe that's because I'm not a. Anyway, I, I don't think we need to run it again. I, I don't think the answer is a unanimous. No. Anyone who answered says yes, it would be useful. Yes, yes, yeah. So, okay, well, uh, yeah, um, I know some people haven't been able to, to do it, but yeah, I, I think that it is something we're, we're definitely exploring. Um, and we will keep you posted where we get to. And if anyone's got any bright ideas, we'd like to hear from you about that, definitely. So, okay, do you want us to just show the topics um, that we had that came up? Yeah, let's go back to that. Okay, I've just seen Jesse's point. Yeah, it's good to get an understanding, but it could be a barrier for those trying to enter the profession. But yeah. What do you think to that? I think, um, I mean, I suppose the thing is, you wouldn't want it to, maybe the thing I've always reflected on is that it doesn't fit in. I mean, it is covered in an LAS qualification, mm. but not in a lot of detail. But does it need to be? covered there or is it something you do with CPD later if you decide? I, I, for me it seems to fit into CPD yeah. when you're actually in a position where it's part of your role Yeah. Um, and then this would work yeah. if you were um, yeah. actually dealing with active things and that, that could be part of this qualification is that it's not abstract, it's writing case studies, it's working through in my, in my own position I had this challenge and this is how I dealt with it. And the, the but I, I suppose one thing just to come back on what Jess has said, and I know Katie, you said you agree as well, but you know, if, if you are going to go and work in the world of libraries and you don't understand anything about copyright and licensing, I think as we get more and more electronic resources, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I do think that it does cut across. I mean, maybe maybe it's my way of viewing it, but I, I thought that copyright cuts across so many aspects of library work that to avoid it is really um, quite unhelpful, actually. I mean, it would be a bit like a librarian saying, you know, well, I've I, I kind of, I, I've heard about this thing called open access, but I don't want to read up about that at all. I don't mm. want to know what it is, because I just want to work in a public library. I mean, yeah. they're kind of quite, issues around copyright and access to how it you know how it manifests itself in the library mm. when you're running an interlibrary loan service when you've got a photocopier or a scanner when you've got electronic resources it does feel to me that it's it's kind of one of the really big issues you've got to you know it definitely along I mean, with our research has found i mean and it's not something that people want to avoid it but they can't so they don't and mm. actually many people don't avoid it at all and not just those of us on the call here. Mm, mm, um, mm. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, yeah. So what was that? Um, Katie's comment that um, knowledge is essential. Uh, yeah. Would this course be available to everyone with every scholarship? See, these are the kinds of things that you really need um, a proper resource project and team to, to, to work look into. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and absolutely, Louise. I think that's a really good point. If you want to speak, Louise, do come on. But um, I mean my I don't I don't know what people think but my sort of um, sense um, I get is that often library directors don't necessarily know lots about copyright we were asked to write a brief in um, a Sconal brief in to go to library managers because there was a sense um, Sconal had a very strong sense that the Hargreaves review even though it was kind of five years later there was a lot of misunderstandings amongst um, senior management about how to interpret um, what the Hargreaves review, how it had amended the law, mm. and that, that people were still using kind of outdated practices. So, um, okay, Louise, no, no problem at all, no problem. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of the topics, again, this is similar to to our interests. These are the ones that we drew out, um, and they're ones that we've covered before. I mean, transnational education. I don't think we have had a session on that. No. That's probably. In my view, uh, uh, I, mean, I was going to say it's less about copyright and more about licensing practices and how you negotiate those transnational deals. But in fact, if we think about transnational education and copyright post Brexit and cross border access, there that's something we've spoken about in the past. And maybe we want a bit of a focus yeah. on how does that work and maybe post implementation of the digital single market directive in Europe and how is it working in Europe and what are they doing mm. and how does that impact what we do in the UK. Um, it might be a bit of work to, to, to make sure we've honed the question a bit because if you if, if you say well let's talk about copyright post Brexit you just it's a huge area there's lots of different areas clearly we want to be looking at education yeah and we want to be asking the right questions um, open access I know we've in some ways been trying to not shy away from open access but we're very aware that we build this as copyright and online learning and that the, the, the copyright elements of the open access discussion about ownership, copyright, and the licenses that come off the back of the Plan S and the rights retention strategy are very, very detailed. Um, and there is actually a session happening shortly in the British Library convening mm -hmm. for institutions that are dealing with all that intellectual property stuff. Um, so uh, I think we we are aware of those. We 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 we're tracking them and we will point them out. Um, but I don't think it's something that necessarily sits that well with this series. Um, Stephen's just asking about when the session is at the British Library. So that, um, that was discussed at the, it was on the 1st of November, it's an online event. Now it is, um, was on the UK SCL list. Yeah. So that is four institutions. So I think we'll, we'll I can, I, I think what I'll do is find out from the meeting organisers whether they are whether they've got spaces left, whether they've got spaces left, and how they're managing that, um, rather than just. But well, I think it probably post that on this copy seek. I'll, I'll put an update to this copy seek on okay. where we are with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, we're, we're anyone? Does anyone want to suggest any topics? Um, any more topics? I just did we pick up Philippa's point about any course? Go back to the course that it should be. Um, open rather than buying a paywall. Yeah. That's one of our major plans. Yeah, we would want it to be open. In yes. fact, we, we want everything that we do to be as open as it possibly can, which is part of the reason why we haven't quite got on with the third edition of <laughs> Don't do any other things. Yes. Um, and also, we, need, we, we want to make it open. And yeah. That requires work. To, well, it requires to funding, it. is the it other issue. Work to get the funding. So, so I think the sense that it's, uh, yeah. Okay, thanks, Irene. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for joining us, Irene. And we're waving at you and come to you soon. So, but thank you, anyone who's got to leave. I think we're, we're just wrapping up now. But yeah, so as we said, next um, session is on the 12th of November, mm -hmm. and that's with Simon, Hannah, and Kate and a discussion with them. So it will be picking up from this discussion. It will be, uh, yeah. Looking more at the detail of their specific examples. Um, so that's really looking forward to that one. Yeah, the session um, that we haven't yet got a date for, <laughs> we're hoping, we're just waiting for confirmation from the um, Intellectual Property Office's education team 
um, that they're going to be happy to present about the IP education framework that they're working on at the moment. And it's a framework that goes um, from schools all the way through to sort of higher education. Um, and um, we think you know, it would be really good if, if uh, we can get them to come. Um, it'll be early December if we do this. Um, and so I think we have earmarked the third. We have, we're, we're waiting to. But we are aware this is a piece of work that, as it's their national framework for the whole of education, they, they need to make sure they've gone through the steps of consultation. And we suspect they might not actually be ready no. to talk to us about it. But we do have them. They have agreed that they will come and talk to us about it. So we're looking forward to that when it does happen. Yeah. But we have got the Christmas special locked in for 17th of December. So put that in your. And we'll start working on that sea shanty, shall we? Let's let's move on to the next bit, which is the thing that we are saying we're going to do, as we failed last time round. Yep, we have a competition launched. We have a T-shirt on offer um, for the best carved pumpkin. So go uh, put your carving skills um into in, you know in, in, into action um can you have a go at making a pumpkin <laughs> with the copyright and online logo uh, online learning logo on it um if you can then um we would like you to take a photo of it um you can email it to chris and i if you're not on twitter but you can tweet about it um we need these ready though for halloween so by the um the 30th of october please um, and I think, Greg, you've actually got, you put together a web page with details about that. Um, so if you're able to share that in the chat with everyone um, so they can find out about that competition um, after today. But yeah, it will be, it will be, we're going to be tweeting about it. So, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing all there those pumpkins we which do. we'll be able to present in November. <laughs> we will. Ah, marvellous. Thank you're you, gonna, Greg. You're going to make one, aren't you? Uh, have you got any pumpkins? Uh, your pumpkins got cleared. I've got, got five pumpkins. You've got five pumpkins? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yes. Okay. Wait. Right. Well. We are at the end. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining session. us, everyone. Thanks again to Irene for presenting um, and for everybody's input. We will see you again on the 12th of November. Stop the recording? Stop the recording. Have you done it? No, you do it. I can't. I can't look at how to do it. I can't.